CERN researchers have made a remarkable discovery at the Large Hadron Collider. For the first time ever, they have succeeded in detecting pairs of top quarks in collisions between heavy ions. And let's be clear, this is by no means just another particle discovery. It's a discovery that takes us straight back to the wondrous states of the newly born universe. The research results prove that all six quark flavors already existed in the first moments of the cosmos, floating in the primordial soup of quark-gluon plasma. Today, we'll show you exactly what scientists found at the LHC, what insights this gives us about the early universe, and what the new discovery tells us about the nature of strong interaction. So be sure to stick around until the end to learn all the details of the exciting CERN discovery. To begin with, it makes sense to acquire some basic knowledge. Because what exactly are these much-cited quarks? Well, basically, we're dealing with elementary particles that are nothing more than fundamental components of matter. Furthermore, quarks are the only elementary particles in the standard model of particle physics that are subject to all four fundamental interactions. Experts distinguish between six types of quarks, known as flavors, namely up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom. Each quark flavor also has a corresponding antiquark, whose electric charge and other quantum numbers have opposite signs. Another special feature of quarks, however, is that they are never found in isolation, but only in bound form. This applies either to hadrons, or in other words, composite particles that include protons and neutrons, and thus the components of atomic nuclei, or to quark-gluon plasmas. This refers to a state of matter in which quarks and gluons behave quasi-freely, because extremely high temperatures and baryon densities actually lead to the lifting of confinement, or in other words, the locking in of these particles. And while gluons are indirectly responsible for the attraction of protons and neutrons in an atomic nucleus, and thus act as carriers of the strong interaction, experts assume that quarks and gluons moved freely for a few fractions of a second after the Big Bang. This quark-gluon plasma thus formed the primordial soup from which all matter in the cosmos originated. And excitingly, with the help of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, it's possible to skim a spoonful of this primordial soup and reconstruct the extreme conditions that prevailed immediately after the creation of the universe. If you like, you can imagine the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator as a 27-kilometer long kitchen located about 100 meters below ground, where some of the rarest and hottest recipes in the cosmos are prepared. And while the LHC mainly collides protons, once a year, heavy ions, such as lead nuclei, are also fired at each other to add another important ingredient to the primordial soup. It's obvious that the study of quark-gluon plasma provides unique insights into this early chapter of the universe. Unfortunately, however, the quark-gluon plasma produced in heavy ion collisions has an extremely short lifespan of only about 10 to the power of minus 23 seconds, which makes it impossible for physicists to observe directly. Instead, researchers are focusing their attention on particles that emerge from the collisions, pass through the quark-gluon plasma, and thus provide important insights into its properties. What CERN researchers have discovered at the LHC the so-called top quark plays a decisive role in this. It's the heaviest elementary particle known to date, exceeding the mass of other quarks many times over. The experts explain, the top quark decays into a W boson and a bottom quark faster than the time it takes to form the quark-gluon plasma. However, the decay products of the W boson only begin to interact with the plasma later. This allows us to use the top quark as a kind of time marker, giving us the unique opportunity to study the temporal evolution of the quark-gluon plasma. Briefly, for a better understanding, while the bottom quark is the second heaviest quark, the W boson, just like the Z boson, mediates the weak interaction, which mainly comes into play in the beta decay of certain radioactive atomic nuclei. With this information in mind, we can now take a detailed look at the exciting discovery made by the CERN researchers. Specifically, the experts used ATLAS, a particle detector at the LHC that has already been used to detect the Higgs boson, among other things. For their new results, the scientists studied lead ions that collided at an energy of 5.02 tera-electron volts per nucleon pair between 2015 and 2018. 
The experts observed the production of top quarks in the so-called dileptin channel, in which the top quarks decay into a bottom quark and a W boson, which then decays into either an electron or a muon and the corresponding neutrino. The result again has a statistical significance of 5.0 standard deviations, marking the first detection of top quark pairs in heavy ion collisions. Those responsible commented on their unprecedented discovery as follows. We're particularly proud of the fact that we do not rely on the identification of bottom quarks in these events. This allows us to use our analysis in the future for the notoriously difficult bottom tacking calibration in heavy ion collisions, which is necessary for future measurements of the temporal evolution of the quark-gluon plasma. The bottom line is that the ATLAS researchers have measured the top quark production rate with a relative uncertainty of 31% which is primarily due to the limited size of the data set. Future heavy ion data will therefore further improve the precision, and in fact, the researchers say they are already preparing further measurements that will focus on investigating the decay of a top quark into two other quarks. This will allow experts to understand the fundamental properties of the early universe more accurately than ever before. What the strongest magnetic field in the universe reveals about the primordial soup. To say that conditions in the newly born cosmos were extreme would be a gross understatement. Just 10 microseconds after the Big Bang, the entire universe consisted of a quark-gluon plasma, which is known for its extraordinary density and temperature. In fact, the particles here are so close together that the density can be up to 10 times higher than in an atomic nucleus, and at the same time, the temperature at over 2 trillion degrees Celsius is even higher than that inside stars. The combination of high density and temperature in turn causes the particles in the quark-gluon plasma to interact strongly with each other and move quickly. But that's not all. This wondrous state of matter also has remarkable viscosity. Although quark-gluon plasma consists of particles usually considered hard or rigid, it behaves like a liquid. Its particles can flow in a continuous stream, similar to water, and experiments have shown that this primordial plasma is even the most fluid liquid in the universe, with no internal friction whatsoever, allowing it to rotate faster than any other fluid. But how did the cosmos actually shake off this extraordinary state? Well, by hadronizing. In simple terms, this means that particles were produced from the primordial soup although experts are still unable to say with certainty how this process took place in detail. What we can say, however, is that as a result, the cosmos gradually developed into the universe we know today. And in fact, a few months ago, physicists from the Star Collaboration succeeded in uncovering another thrilling mystery of the primordial soup. And all they had to do was create what is probably the strongest magnetic field in the universe. But first things first, for their experiment, the researchers used the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider at Brookhaven National Laboratory in the United States to accelerate atomic nuclei of gold, ruthenium, and zirconium and collide them at energies of up to 200 giga electron volts. This creates a quark-gluon plasma for about 100 quadrillionths of a second, but sometimes the heavy ions collide not exactly head-on, but slightly offset to the side. This causes the resulting particle cloud and plasma to spin causing quarks, gluons, and positively charged protons that have not yet decayed to rush past each other. On paper, this should also create a strong magnetic field. But in practice, we did not know for a long time exactly how strong this magnetic field is and how it affects the quark-gluon plasma. Well, until now, star researchers have discovered that the collisions actually generate a magnetic field with a field strength of 10 to the power of 18, or 1 trillion Gauss. And that is nothing less than probably the strongest magnetic field in the entire universe. To put this into perspective, the Earth's magnetic field has a strength of about 0.5 Gauss, while a refrigerator magnet has a strength of around 100 Gauss. But even neutron stars, which are among the strongest magnets in the cosmos, have a magnetic field that is around a thousand times weaker than the one created by the researchers in the particle accelerator. In terms of effects, the experts determined that the swirling cloud of free quarks and gluons reacts strongly to the magnetic field. They say that the quark-gluon plasma has very high conductivity, and that the results therefore open up new insights into the fundamental properties of the cosmic primordial soup. 
More specifically, this concerns the question of under what conditions the first building blocks of matter were formed at that time. According to this, the magnetic fields in the quark-gluon plasma could cause charged particles to separate spatially, depending on their charge and magnetic spin. In addition, the new findings may also reveal how the strong interaction that explains the bond between quarks and hadrons behaves under such conditions. And now we'd like to explain the powerful interaction between the click and subscribe buttons. Simply press the thumb and subscribe to never miss another video from us again. We'll see you soon.